This video is all about a big dog. Not this big dog. Hey Louis, not this big dog. And certainly not that little one. This big dog, the Hemingway Big Dog Long Range E-Bike. And as you notice, I'm in the cottage because it's chucking it down with rain again outside. So I'm going to attempt to build this in the cottage. Now, that might not seem a problem, but the last time we've built an e-bike of this size in the cottage, I couldn't actually get it out of the cottage. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? Let's see how we get on. Well, it looks well packed. Well protected. Good pad on the side there. And I'll only, apart from a pair of scissors to cut all the tie wraps, I'll only use the tools they supply to put it together. Definitely well packaged. Look at that centre stand, it's like a motorbike centre stand. And interestingly on the box, it says keep the box for 15 days. So I presume if you have a problem with the bike, they take the full bike back and send you another one. So what do we get in the box? Oh, we get a hat. <laughs> I've never seen that before with the bike. Front spindle. Spanner. Lights. Screws. Pedals. I imagine this is the charging unit. Yep, charging unit. With a UK plug, which is good to see. Ah, and a good uh, Allen key set. All right, let's get it together. There's two spaces for the front wheel. There's a larger one which goes on the opposite side to the one with the disc. And you've just got to make sure you can get the disc and the caliper correctly. They're not too fiddly. For the spanner set you get, you get one of these, which is okay, and you get this, which is great. But when you've got an Allen screw with a nut on the end, you can't actually use both ends at the same time. <laughs> you can either put this on here to tighten up the nut, and then you don't have the Allen key or the, the other way around. So to put it together, I had to use an adjustable spanner or you need an 8mm and a 10mm spanner or an Allen key and use these sockets. So there we have it. Reasonably easy to put together. It'd be easier if you had a separate 10mm or an 8mm spanner because of that strange configuration with that multi-tool. But apart from that, easy to put together as easy as any other one I've put together and the quality of it is really good the paint work is really good the, all the welding around everything's good and if you look at the bottom bracket down here <clears throat> it's all encased actually looks like it's a, a central motor rather than a hub motor but it is a hub motor so there's some sig significant engineering gone in this bit here I like this drop down stand Love the big wide rack. Anyway, let's get it outside and see how it performs once it stops raining. It's finally stopped raining, we've managed to get outside. This summer's just been awful. I've had great fun on this. I've reviewed quite a few of these moped type design bikes. And uh, this is the most expensive. I'll put the price below. This is the price at currently at uh, when we're recording the video, but check the description because there might be some discounts and some offers and it may be updated over the year. But uh, it's definitely the most expensive, but I would say it's my favorite of the step through bikes so far. It is a UK legal one, so I'm able to use it on the bridleways. And instead of taking it on the road today, I thought I'd bring it up here. It's got a 250 watt motor, simple black and white display, up and down the power on here. You turn your lights on and off, and you switch it on and off here. Lovely hydraulic brakes. These are really good. I'd say these are probably the best brakes I've had on my bike of this type. It is a cargo bike, the Hemingway Big Dog. And it's a big dog because it has a massive battery in here. 
They reckon, and I haven't tested this, but they reckon you'll get up to 80 miles out of that battery. And I would say that's probably a lightweight person who's not on low power. But you're certainly going to get 40, 50 miles out of that, no problem. And uh, coming up here, it doesn't indicate that we've used any power, as some of the other ones with the smaller batteries will. Built-in lights, disc brakes, as I say, hydraulic. And this looks like it's uh, an internal motor, but it isn't. The actual motor is the rear hub. It's just got this casing on there. But look at that welding on there. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's a lovely metallic gray color. Don't know if you can see that on the camera. And it is a cargo bike. It's got a lovely big bed on the back there. You can put a big crate on that. Go shopping, panniers on it. And you can buy, doesn't come with it, but you can buy a basket that fits on the front here as well. 20 inch wheels, four inches across. No rear suspension, but you wouldn't really want that on a cargo bike. And to be fair, when you have these tires, there's that much cushioning in the tires and with a good seat, you don't really need rear suspension. It hasn't got folding pedals, but it's not a folding bike, but the pedals have got good grips on them. Seven gears, Shimano, button up and down. Display on this, there's all the things you'd expect to do. You can set the time, your distance, how long you've been cycling, maximum distance. And uh, as I say, you can switch the lights on and off on this as well. Super bright. And I would say, as well as people being able to see you from those lights, there's a bit of dust on there because I've been using it, they would light up the road as well. Back one lights up with the logo anyway on there as well. Good mud guards, keep you clean. De derailleur bracket on there. But I really like the stand as well. It is like a moped or a motorbike stand. So it's not going to fall over in the wind, particularly when you're putting luggage on the back or if you've got a front basket and you're putting stuff on there as well. Having a centre stand with a cargo bike he thinks is a great idea. The wheels may look plastic, but they're actually cast aluminium. Same design front and back. Front adjustable forks that you can lock off as well. So if you're using it on the road, you could uh, lock those off if you don't want any front suspension. It has got a lock on here. This is not an ignition switch. It enables you to undo the battery, which is here, and take it to the house to charge. Or there's a rubber plug here, which you can unplug and plug your charger in there. I think they call it a big dog because it has that 960 watt hour battery in there, which gives it that massive capacity to get your distance on. So if you're putting this on your camper van or taking it away for the weekend, you probably, if you're just using it back and forwards to the shop and popping out and about on it, you probably won't need to charge it while you're away for a weekend. And of course, the bike's a lot lighter if you take that battery out. But it's not a lightweight bike, it's a cargo bike. I'll put the weight below in kilometres and pounds now. Got lots of a seat adjustment on this as well. So you'd need to be pretty small to have it that low. I'm six foot and there's plenty of room on that and there's plenty of distance to travel on there as well. That's about the height I've been using it at. Comes with two keys. Oh, there's a little lever under there. I keep forgetting. Look at the size of that battery. And it just plugs in there. It'll take about six hours, six, six and a half hours to charge from flat. All feels really well made. There's some weight in that battery though, so if you was transporting it, you could take the battery out. That is really a super comfy seat. So I'm really impressed. As I say, it's not the cheapest one I've reviewed, but I think it reflects in the quality of it why this one's more expensive than the bigger battery as well. It's obviously not a folding bike, but what I find, if you check some of my other reviews out of the folding ones, it doesn't give you that much more room. <laughs> Basically, the fold in the middle, but with having the big wheels on, they still need quite a bit of space in, in your garage, in your camper van to put them away. So on a bike rack, or if you've got a garage in your motor room that this will take, you can fold the front bars down and drop the seat right down. It's just the length. But if it was a folding one, you would reduce the length by half, but you'd increase the width by double. So they still take up a lot of room if you put them in, inside a garage, folding or not. We obviously have a bike rack and this will just fit 
in the garage of our bike if I fold the bars down and drop the seat. And to fold the bars down, just undo those, then you can fold them, fold them forwards or backwards. The gears have been great out the box. I haven't had to adjust them or anything, worked straight away. And it was relatively easy to put together. There was that confusion with the spanners. But apart from that, no problem whatsoever. It doesn't take long to put up together. And as I've said many times before, it probably takes longer to get it out the box than it does actually to assemble it. You have got the adjustment on here as well to move the bars backwards and forwards. So if you want more or less reach, but it hasn't got a long neck on here, but it has got quite high bars. So it does give you the opportunity to move them backwards and forwards, which would give you a lot more reach. It is a UK registered bike. You're allowed to ride this on the road in the UK and it does have a throttle. And this throttle is only for walk assist. So it'll only do four mile an hour, which was in with the legislations. But if you don't want that on, there's a connector here and you can disconnect it. But it doesn't work like a moped. It's not like a proper throttle. It's only for walk assist. So if you're pushing it along with all your luggage and your gear on up a steep hill or something, you can just use it on walk assist. The controls are quite easy to use from the different power settings. I'm in power mode two at the moment. And although I'm on a flat track, it's nice and easy to cycle. If you go up to the faster modes, the more power, you can almost go cycle with it. It is pedal assist, but you can almost go cycle with it, which means turning the pedals without actually engaging the drive from the chain. Yeah, suitably impressed with this. It works very well. It does everything you'd expect it to do, and the quality is there as well. As I say, of all the step through ones, this is definitely the most expensive, um, but I would say it's the best quality. It looks good. The components that are on it are really good as well. And I've had no problem going up hills and following these dirt tracks. So it'd be perfectly all right for commuting. You could easily use this to go to work on ditch the car if the weather was all right, or you had some decent waterproofs. I don't know what it's been about this summer this year, but we've had nothing but rain. It's so nice to be able to get out on the bike again. As I say, everything worked out the box. I didn't have to adjust the brake. Sometimes on bikes, when you get them delivered, you have to recenter the brake calipers, but I didn't have that problem with this one. Nice and easy to put together. I didn't use the instructions. I think if you have to use the instructions, particularly if you've done a bike before, it's too complicated. And uh, there was no need for at all for me to use the instructions on this one. And the gears, in and out all the gears, no problem, straight out the box. It wasn't scratched, it was well packaged. And uh, although this is quite a heavy bike because the size of that battery, and it is a cargo bike, you can reduce the weight of it for traveling if you take the battery out. And of course it's less stealable if you take the battery out as well. It's a good thing having a detachable battery um, because you can obviously take the battery in your house or in your camper van or onto your campsite to have it charged. If it's fixed to the bike, you're a bit limited to actually where you can charge it. You obviously have to take the full bike. But having a detachable battery you really need a lock on it so you don't get somebody to come along and nick your battery. I don't know how much the batteries are, but they won't be cheap. So for security reasons and for reducing the weight, being able to remove the battery is ideal. So we're back at home. I've probably done just about 10, 11 miles on this and it's performed really well. Super comfy. Um, I do like it and uh, I think the quality of the products on this make it so you're not just paying more for this type of bike you're actually getting some more quality products as part of this uh, particularly the brakes the brakes are excellent on this i have a, a trek mountain bike full suspension mountain bike and, and these are jolly brakes i think are actually better than the ones on my trek and i can guarantee these are probably a damn sight cheaper as well but they work so well 
Um, lovely bike if you're thinking through, thinking of buying a step through moped type bike like this definitely want to consider and this is a UK legal one as well so you're not going to get any hassle from the police it's the right size motor and everything and good quality do check in the description because the information I've been sent may be different for when I actually edit the video I've had this for a couple of weeks now and I haven't been able to film it because of the bad weather so um, check in the description because over time the offers and price of these do change and there's all the specifications and everything and the link to the website in there as well. But I hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again for watching.